Welcome to Big Blend Radio with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazine.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Blend Radio with Nancy and Lisa. You know, the full-time travelers on the Love Your Park store and publishers of Big Blend magazines. Today, we're excited to welcome back Linda Ballou. Uh, Linda Ballou is a travel writer and a author of travel guides and also historical fiction books. And today, we're going to be talking about her majestic mountain tour because she's going to Colorado and it's all in celebration of her latest novel, Embrace of the Wild, inspired by equestrian explorer Isabella Bird. And she's been on the show a couple times talking about her. And mm-hmm. Isabella Bird is definitely a character. She's definitely a strong woman. And um, so it's really great to chat about her again, kind of catch up with Linda too, because it's been a while. But I encourage you to go to her website, lindabaloauauthor.com. Also get the book on Amazon. So welcome back, Linda. How are you? Oh, I'm fabulous, Lisa. It's good to see you and Hi. Yeah, it's good. This is exciting because I remember last year. I mean, COVID has played havoc with everybody. And oh, then, wow. worse it's, now it's, than ever before. I'm afraid. Yeah. So many of my friends now. I'm 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 being more careful than ever. Yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of rampant. Yeah. But I, from what yeah. I'm seeing, it's not as bad. It's kind of now we've gone into just there, it's a lot of flu, right? <laughs> Compared. To, yeah. So it's kind of like that. But you. I remember last year talking, I'm going to go on this trip. Hopefully we can make this work. And right. I know you love Colorado and um, Nancy and I just drove through Colorado in the very beginning of June. I've got to think of it because we're coming from the Pacific Northwest. So we drove down and went through Greeley in that area through Wyoming down. Right. We were on our way to Lubbock, Texas. And somehow we ended up in this little town. <laughs> And there was the signs, and we were too late for the San uh, Massacre Creek National Park, oh, historical park. Sand and Creek Massacre. I, mm-hmm. I took photos of it all, and I'm like, Linda, <laughs> Linda, because this is really part of part of her story. Right? Part of the story, yes, yes. Well, it I included it in uh, Rocky Mountain Jim's background. Rocky Mountain is the love interest in this story, and. Uh, he was a, a bit of a teller of tall tales and nobody really knew where he came from. So I took that opportunity to give him a backstory that made him a more sympathetic character and sh- uh, shed a light on the Sand Creek Massacre, which was buried under the rug by historians for many, many, many years. Mm-hmm. So the memorial that you went by that I have not been to, uh, I think they put it up in like 2005. It finally mm-hmm. received recognition as as being a historical monument. Ah, that's so, you know, it's there. It's there. But um, let's kind. Of, I know you're going to go to Estes Park and Conifer and um, Evergreen. But let's back up a little bit for those who don't know about Embrace of the Wild, and it right. this could be their first time hearing about Isabella Bird because she's right. quite a character. Give an overview she's of cool. who she is. All right, she's so, a spunky uh, lady. Uh, Uh, Isabella Bird (laughs) is a woman whose time has come again. You Mm -hmm. know, while she lived in in the 1800s uh, in the Victorian age, she was an incredible adventurer and explorer, a woman who went to many places where white women had never been seen before. And um, she wrote uh, letters back to her sister Henrietta about her travels. And her sister put together her journals and helped her publish her books. And she became the best loved travel writer of her day. And she was just an amazing woman on so many levels. Uh, she, her life didn't really begin until she was 40 years old because for the first 40 years of her life, she was considered to be an invalid. She, uh, I mean, I don't wow. know how much you want to go, me mm-hmm. to go into her physical disabilities, but um, she lifted herself up from the invalid's bed uh, to go on to to be this incredible equestrian explorer. <laughs> this so is cool. amazing. God love See, her, you know? Yeah, we she's need an amazing so cool. woman. And when I say her time has come again, it's because um, three books were published about her in 2021, not just my book. Wow. Two nonfiction books were published, uh, one by an English woman, who had traveled to all of the distant 
places that I, she went to Japan and Korea and China wow. and India and all of these places, which I've never been to, but this other woman has written about those uh, places that she journeyed to. She's been to them. And uh, another woman, uh, an American writer, uh, did a uh, nonfiction book about Isabella. But mine is the only historical fiction book about cool. Isabella. Which means and, that you've got Rocky Mountain Jim gets to have a little, you know, they get to have know. a little romance. You know? Yeah, well, yeah. that's certainly a big part <laughs> of my story. And, and one of the reasons that I wanted to write this book is because I felt their love story was a very unique and special uh, romance and that they you know met on so many different levels and that you know I just thought you know it was just a beautiful beautiful love story but you know I've been noodling over writing this story for a couple of decades but I didn't get to it until the pandemic and this is my pandemic baby <laughs> I was having way too much fun with life uh, I had just come back from a month tour in Australia. I remember, yeah. When the world shut down. And I, it took me a bit to adjust to the fact that my wings were not only clipped, they were like ripped out of their joints. You know, I wasn't going anywhere. Yep. And it really was frustrating for me because I had worked really hard as a travel writer to have, you know, develop nice relationships with tour companies and so on. And all of that takes work and time. And a lot of the companies, uh, fortunately, most of the companies that I've dealt with have survived, which is awesome. really a wonderful thing because the travel industry is just decimated during the pandemic. But I uh, had no, I had met Isabella Bird when I was researching for my first novel, Wainani, A Voice from Old Hawaii, because I, she landed serendipitously in the Hawaiian Islands mm -hmm. uh, and spent, six months there and she wrote a book called six months in the sandwich islands which i used for my research for this book that said in pre-contact hawaii and you know so i had a, a love for isabella uh, decades ago and then uh when i did become a travel writer my first travel writing gig was in colorado was in telluride colorado and then i used her book a lady's life in the rockies for my research for articles, you know, about Colorado. And her book drew me to Estes Park. And, mm. um, you know, then I wrote several articles and went to places she went to. So when the pandemic came and I went, oh my God, you know, uh, I, get, I don't wanna just lose this time, you know? So I decided to, yes, go ahead and attempt to write this story. <laughs> It's, well, but it's yeah. done really well and aren't you didn't you um i know it's done really well and you've done you know panel discussions you came on with pat jurgens uh with us right. doing panel discussions and right. you'll be doing one in in uh it's evergreen for with her right. um, and another another author but you know it's women's history and i think a lot of us you know and you say it's, it's she's back again i think this is an it's it's an important thing but you also ended up on a documentary with right. the bbc that's, the that's bbc <laughs> See, there, see, what's happening now is a lot of people are looking in history for empowered females because it's mm -hmm. quite popular. It's time. It's, you know, it's their time. It. Right. So Isabella has been recognized by the BBC. Of course, she is English. And they have a program called Trailblazers, which is a TV series. And it's, it's a documentary, but it's more like a uh, reality show. And uh, they selected me to be the Isabella Bird expert on this program. And cool. they, yeah, they paid my way to go to Estes Park and put me up in a really nice resort and put me on camera, which really surprised me. I thought they were just gonna, you know, let's say I was a consultant, but they put me on camera and I had an interview with the three actresses who were reconstructing her journey, you know? Awesome. But it was really like, have you ever watched The View? Yeah. The, well, it was yeah, kind of like that, you know, like there was mm. three of them and one of me and they were asking me a lot of questions and uh, it was a lot of fun. I was really excited to be there. I was very honored to be there and I can't wait to see the clip 
but these ladies were in no shape to be doing anything that Isabella Bird did. So I, I, I'm going to be curious to see how that turns out, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> I want to wow. know. So are they going to go horse riding through the they, mountains? Or? They got on horses, but I don't think any of them had ever been on a horse. That's funny. Uh, you know, they were out there fly fishing and uh, they were simulating her climb to Long's Peak, you know, and no I mean, I, they are actresses. So, you know, they are acting yeah. it up. So I'm, I'll be very curious to see how all of that turns out. And I hope to have a clip of my interview soon that I can share. Oh, and awesome. with, you know, with specific instructions on how to access the, the program itself, which is, I believe, going to come out in September. Oh, perfect timing. See, yes. and listen, That's fall cool. in that area where you're going is oh, I know. <laughs> magic. I mean, you're going to see the colors. It's magic. Yep. And people, you know, we always talk about, you know, the fall colors and, and back east, which we have seen now. And listen, right. you really freeze your buns off doing that and just saying, but, but, but <laughs> the fall colors in Colorado are, you know, the They're Southwest cool. has good fall colors. Right. It well, does. I've been to, uh, I've been to Colorado in the spring and summer. And of course it's gorgeous then with the wildflowers and the waterfalls, mm -hmm. you know, and the lush life and all the wildlife, but I've not been in the fall and I'm really looking forward to it. This tour that I'm taking my majestic mountain tour is taking me up into, well, Evergreen is like at 8,400 feet. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. be in the real Alpine regions and it's and I'm gonna go to this place uh, called Golden and yep. I'll walk along the Golden Creek, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Clear Creek there, which is a Bella Road in the, these areas. Of course, they've all changed, but there will be, there will be pristine areas in this neck of the woods, I'm sure. Um, I'm not going to Colorado Springs and Manitou and other places which have been developed so much that there's no reason for me to be there, so to speak. I'm looking for the more pristine regions that she rode in. She rode 600 miles, but she rode uh, in the late fall and the winter in snow. But, uh, uh, you know, wow. I'm sticking to September and, uh, you know, crisp. 65 degrees blue skies and you know it should be really really nice for hiking and I hope to get in some horseback riding uh, I'm going to take I'm going to I'm staying in Fair Play which is a very authentic mm -hmm. little western town mm -hmm. I'm staying in the only hotel there <laughs> it's very <laughs> cute and uh, they have museums and so forth so but it's close to Breckenridge and even mm -hmm. though Breckenridge was just barely mentioned in her book uh, there's a gondola there, and I think that, that would be a very nice way to get up into the altitude, into the higher elevations to have the nice views mm. uh, that she experienced. She went way higher than I'm going to go, uh, and um, so I'm going to do that for sure, and Breckenridge, of course, is very touristy, but also very scenic and cute it's little beautiful. place to be. I mean yeah. Uh, another one I'm going to go to is Georgetown. Georgetown has a little narrow gauge train. And Isabella took a train, a narrow gauge train, and she was traveling during the mining days, the gold rush days. And so there were more trains that have been, but this, this train is narrow gauge and it will be a nice, you know, simulated experience. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, when I get to Estes Park, of course, I'm going to go into the Rocky Mountain National Park. I was going to say, like, you've got to go to the, the park. <laughs> Absolutely. And while we're talking about the park, I mean, one of the things I wanted to share is that the, uh, the entry system that they have instituted there, and most of the national parks now do have these reservation systems. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know how familiar your listeners are with this, but you really should go on recreation.gov mm -hmm. and, you know, get a reservation. They had a very simple site to operate. You have to sign in and register and, you know, put a password and all of that stuff. But once you're on, you know, you have access to all the parks that are using these, these entry Reservation including systems. the forests, the forests mm -hmm. use them. Right. BLM land. I mean, it's right. It's really right. all public, federal, public lands use right. it, and you can book your camping. You can right. You know, do and everything you should. with that. You should mm -hmm. because there's there's right now they're just mobbed uh, because people are not wanting to do international travel. 
So they're mm-hmm. going to our parks big time. Now mm-hmm. I already booked, uh, it's only $2 for your booking. Um, and I'm also going to book a horseback ride in the park, which I think horseback riding is really wonderful in these high elevations. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but I'm definitely uh, affected by the altitude. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, <laughs> in the back of a good horse is a good place That's to be. That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> that is cool. You're right. Yeah, because it is. Mm-hmm. We've done it like in the Sequoias, um, in Sequoia, just outside Sequoia National Park with Christy Wood. She does trail rides in the foothills. And you know what? It just gives you this whole other right. connection to the to nature being out there, you know, but being out of nature on a horse with the, the right company, too, is important to get the right. right. Well, I'm going to book with Gateway, which is inside the park. So that will give me an automatic oh. entrance into the park on my second day, uh, you know, because they have passes mm-hmm. for people. But the other thing I want to mention is that what they do is they hold back 30 percent of their spots that they release at five o'clock every day. So if you were a late comer and you didn't make a reservation or you didn't understand or whatever, it's not too late. You can go on at five o'clock and you know pick up a slot if you're fast. Mm. Mm. Kind of like really standby. It's yeah, like they stand-by. go really quick. So yes. yeah, and part of the park is closed of course because they had two big fires in recent yeah. years. So uh, the park was uh, you know, affected by that, but it's still a lot of gorgeous. There's so much, it's a huge park. I mean, yeah. there's a lot yeah. you can go. Right. It's kind of like Yosemite. People are back going to Yosemite. Yosemite just, you know, had that huge fire too. I was thinking because the Mariposa Grove was really, it was, it was a precarious oh, situation. Oh, I thought of you because you went there. Was, oh, I was so afraid that was going to be destroyed, but yeah. I believe they saved the Mariposa. They Grove. did. Yes. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's amazing what they're doing. And um, you know, the fire management and everything, all the research being done through the Redwoods, Save the Redwoods League, the Sequoia Parks Conservancy, all these people are doing just magical work. But I'm, I'm really mm-hmm. glad to hear you're going to go into the park. We were there in June when the That's when the beautiful. Trail Ridge Road opened, not this June, but a, a couple of years ago. And then like two or three days later, they got such a huge snowfall, they closed it. And so we yeah. had bizarre weather there. They had a huge hail storm, you know, with hail the size of a dime. This is in the summer, you know. Yeah. But the it's Rocky weird. Mountains are famous for mercurial weather. So you have yeah, to be yeah. prepared you, for it all changing anything. within hours and, and all of that. I remember know, so. that about Colorado. Always, you know, you think, oh, it's all summery. And then like, like you'll not. drive a little distance. You're like, whoa, <laughs> put the jackets on, put the jackets on. But yeah. this is exciting. Let's tell everybody about where you're going to be when so that, you know, people can come and uh, see you. And I, I don't know if it's all by reservations or how it works on well, September 18th. Or are these open to the public? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the, the, uh, the women's panel, the strong women in the West paddle is in Evergreen, which is a small, you know, Alpine town and the Hearth, uh, Hearthfire bookstore is where we will be. And of course that's open to the public and we would love to have you, you know, more than welcome. And then the Conifer Historical Society, uh, the one in uh, Evergreen is in the daytime at three o'clock. The one at the Conifer Historical Society that one is ten dollars admission because it's a it's a society and that's what they right. charge for their events. I'm very mm-hmm. honored to be there. I mean that one will be you know wine and hors d'oeuvres and a little bit more hoity doity and very nice. <laughs> and I be you know and I'm very honored to be there. And I'll, I, at right, that event, yeah. I'll be giving a straight talk. Uh, and then when I get to Estes Park, that's kind of like my finale. Uh, I'm doing at at the what's called the Mod Jellison Library, which is in the YMCA Center, which is huge center with this giant lodge, and they've got stables and all sorts of things. And it's a lovely venue. And I'm going to be doing a PowerPoint presentation there. And at that juncture, I'll be able to share what I learned on my mountain tour train, train I, and horse tour yeah yeah i will be able to tell you if i survived or, you know what yeah. i what i experienced you know <laughs> uh, they survive. of course are very familiar with it well actually not everyone is familiar with isabel and estes park but she is considered to be the mother of the rocky mountain national park mm-hmm. because her writing her descriptive writing drew tourists from all over the globe mm-hmm. and brought mm-hmm. it to the uh, national attention so, and 
of course, the Rocky Mountain Jim declared himself the guardian of the mountains. <laughs> so <laughs> he was one of our earliest <laughs> conservationists, you know. Now, I don't know anyone knows, they don't necessarily know who Rocky Mountain Jim was, but he uh, was a, a mercurial personality, a little bit of a sociopath. He uh, did drink a bit, but he was had poet in his poetry in his soul. He also, uh, you know, wrote letters and to the in, articles in the paper defending the mountains, you know, talking about saving the, the mountains from developers early in the day. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he lived, he was a trapper and he lived in a cabin quite rough with, you know, hides on the wall and bones in the yard and you know he you know wore a rawhide shirt and all of this and his face was disfigured from uh the mauling of a bear all wow. of that is true the only thing i changed about him was this business of him being at sand creek massacre and i like i told you why i did that you know because mm -hmm. i felt like it was an opportunity for me to share what was going on in that world before she arrived you know, mm. what, you know what the time was. The Civil War was ending uh, when she arrived, um, and things like that. But the Indian Wars were calming down at that point. We're just about, but there was still a lot of problems with the Indians uh, in the sense mm. that they weren't warring necessarily, but there was a good deal of unhappiness, and um, there was a lot of animosity towards the, mm -hmm. the Indian people. So anyway, um, it's wild because it's not that far away from Ludlow, where the Ludlow massacre mm -hmm. happened. And um, you think about this region. I mean, it's I, I say far because it's not far. I don't think anything's far, apparently. But <laughs> we just keep driving. But but the um, the Ludlow is it, that massacre site near Trinidad Ludlow. It when you go there, you people were trapped underground. I mean, people, women were taking their children. That was a mining thing mm -hmm. where they stood up and said enough with the mining, uh, wow. with what was going on with, it was like a, they stood up against the company that owned the mine and it just got violent and escalated. And so it's, to me, it, it's, it is in, it's in Southern Colorado. So therefore it's close enough. But. Well, I'm very sympathetic with the, with the native peoples mm -hmm. and, and, and mm -hmm. what they've been through and and i love a lot of the indian ways um yeah, and, us too and, yeah so i put mountain gym in the indian village remember if you've read the book yeah you mm -hmm. know that uh when he's small his best friend is running deer is a, is you know an indian boy who grows into mm -hmm. a man they grow into their manhood together and he's his best friend and when he's mauled by the bear, he is he he's you know nursed by you know his Indian maid, and he was a part of these these people, and he loved these people, and so, um, and I enjoyed being there myself, you know, because I like the Indian lore, and I've been in mm -hmm. a sweat lodge, and mm -hmm. you know, and some of my I, I just like a lot of the spiritual aspects of the of the native. Okay. People. Indian people. So I got to put that in the story as well. And um, that was fun for me. I enjoyed doing that. So I broke the story into three parts. The first part, she's in Hawaii, where she has this trans transformation. When she lands there, she is still an invalid. She's She's been on her voyage, but she still is in a lot of discomfort and pain from her back and she has headaches and you know she's not oh. well and she sees these the boys and girls riding with abandon across the the beach with you know ribbons in their hair and she she just yearns to be with them oh if I could only be like that if I could only mm. be free right and uh she ends up going to Hilo and she ends up and this is all true. She ends up riding up the flank of the volcano. She wanted to see mm -hmm. the living volcano. That was something she had read about and heard about. Uh, and so that was a quite a strenuous ride. And she didn't want to ride astride. But the man who was uh, she was staying with said, no, you have to ride astride. This is too difficult to ride. You can't ride side saddle up there. Well, I didn't, well, it's not ladylike. Well, you're you're going to ride a stride, you know, or, mm -hmm. or you can't go. So she does. And 
it is a hard ride and she does take a beating on this ride but she learns that when she's sitting astride she doesn't mm. have pain in her back mm. because her, her she's sitting up straight and her spine is aligned it's not yeah. crooked and so even though she's very tender after this ride <laughs> she uh, she recognizes that she's not experiencing that that you know the horrible back pain and so so she she says well i'm staying here for a while you know and i'm going to enjoy this place and i'm going to ride all over the hawaiian islands and that's exactly what she does and she restores her body so mm. it's quite transformational for her there and it gives mm. her the strength to go on to colorado uh, where she had already planned on this mountain tour, but I don't know how in the world she thought she was going to do it because she was in very bad shape. <laughs> but she she manages, you know. So God love her. Yeah, no, I think it's it's such a good story, and you know we do need those stories. We need those true stories. You know, even though it's a fictional book, we do need those stories to inspire us to move on through any kind of challenge we have in our life and right. obviously through covid everyone has had some kind of challenge and people are now are going through changes right nancy i mean that's mm -hmm. that's the the thing i i think we need to look at these women that yep. stood up and said you know we're going hey, for it we have to you can't just give up you know mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you you gotta you gotta push forward and well, as do what I, works for you right you know? as i say i was very distressed <laughs> when <laughs> When, you know, my whole life stopped, it was like musical chairs, you know, the music stopped and I went, mm -hmm. whoa, and when I went, well, I'm not in a bad place here, but I yeah. feel trapped. But then when I started writing, I went, you know what, this is an opportunity. Don't blow it by yeah. being uh, angry, yeah. you know, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad that I, I didn't waste that time. And, you know, for a year or so, I was living in that in this world of, you know, Hawaii and Colorado. And, and, you know, that's not a bad place. Not to a be. bad place. Not, to be. not at all. You know? <laughs> and then she's writing romance. Yeah. Again, and you it know. Saved, yeah, it saved my sanity. And now it's blossomed into a beautiful thing for me, you know, with all that's sorts awesome. of collateral goodness. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. that's fantastic. Well, we're excited. I can't wait to follow along on your journey or follow you on social media so twitter facebook instagram was that the best places well actually facebook uh and linkedin and youtube are more where i'm at um i do twitter i do twitter okay. but i i don't do instagram for some reason i i have an everyone's got there. their thing yeah. yeah well i don't think you can do it all and i think you have to choose which ones you know work mm -hmm. for you the best because i find if i try to do it all i don't do any of it well Mm -hmm. um you know what i'm saying so i i don't spend a ton of time on social media but you certainly can find me there and mm -hmm. i'd love to hear from you and i always respond to people who contact me uh and of course awesome. my web page you can you know come yeah. and see there linda author.com that's that's the best place for people to connect with you and right. uh, you never know people may say hey do you want to take a detour while you're in colorado so that's a good yeah. thing you never know <laughs> you never know but yeah everyone that's that's the website linda author.com of course you can get her books on amazon too and all those places and again the book is by linda balloons embrace of the wild inspired by equestrian explorer isabella bird so follow her adventures in colorado we're just a little jealous but you know we'll yeah. be on a farm we'll be on a farm in north carolina with chickens and vegetables and a, and a river so well we i hope you'll let me come back and tell you about my tour after i take yeah. it yeah you gotta sure. tell us what's going on you better take all kinds of photos of those fall colors oh yeah and we want the obligatory horse's ears photo like when you're up there we yes. want the photo of the ears and the view we need that i've got photo. a few of those i've got a yeah, few yeah. of those in stock yeah mm -hmm. well you need to get another one <laughs> right. a new one from right. this adventure yeah mm -hmm. so so good to catch up with you and congratulations on the bbc mm -hmm. documentary and the continuing success so cool. of, of your writings fantastic right. linda well, thank you so much thanks and have fun and travel yeah, safe and behave I'm don't gonna. behave I can't wait <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>